we have the different countries right here. US, France, UK, Italy, Germany, Spain, Belgium, Sweden. And we're comparing a time frame between April of this year, 2020, and October 2020. So today's date is October 26, so we're still in October right here. Now, the first thing I want to take a look at in relationship between April and now, October, is the infection rate. The tests that show positive for being infected with COVID-19. So between these two dates in U.S., it has increased by 2x, doubled, okay? France, it quadrupled. In the U.K., it went up by 3x. Italy, it went up 2x, doubled. Germany is the same. Spain, it went up by 1.3x. In Belgium, it went up by 4x. Now, for most people looking at this data initially, it looks very, very scary. Things are spreading, right? The virus is spreading. Well, this is only scary if you omit this column right here. And this is the number of tests that were done between April and October. So let's just take a look at what's going on right here. In the U.S., between April and October, we did 6.5 times more testing. Okay, not 6.5% more 6.5 more testing. In France, there was an increase of 7x more testing between these two dates. Look at the UK. 15 and a half times more tests that were done between these dates. Italy increased by triple. Germany increased by triple. Spain, we've done 10 times more testing between April in October. And in Belgium, the increase in testing was by a factor of 6x. Basically, if you do more testing, you're going to get more positive tests, right? Now, let me just explain another thing. It's called the positivity rate, okay? The positivity rate is how high the virus is transmitting, how high it's spreading around. And you basically take the positive test divided by the number of tests we actually get a positivity rate of three times less, actually between March and October. It means the transmission of this virus is three times less. So when you hear all these new cases going up and more people are testing positive, you must not omit this data right here as well as this data right here. So you got that? All right, let's shift over to the actual death rate between April and October. If we take a look at the U.S., we have a death rate of three times less than it was if we compare April to October. France is six times less. That's not 6%. That's six times less. That's huge. Huge drop. U.K., 10 times less deaths. Italy, 10 times less. Germany, 10 times less. Spain, four times less. And Belgium, seven times less. Well, let's take a look at Sweden. This is the country where they didn't do the strict lockdown. And everyone was concerned about this. They thought it was going to become a real big problem. But take a look at this. Between April and October, the positive infections went down by 1.7 times despite having testing that was up by 2x. So we did twice as much testing, but we got a 1.7 times less positive infection rate. But check this out. Overall, there's been a drop in deaths by 30x between April and October. This is significant. What does this mean? It means that whatever Sweden did they were very, very successful. So apparently they developed herd immunity and they didn't ruin their economy because of it. Why has the death rate dropped so low? Now, is it because people are becoming exposed and getting antibodies? Well, only one-fifth of the population has antibodies to COVID-19. So you would think it would be a lot more. But for this specific virus, it's only 20%. But I found a very interesting paper 
that talks about why the death rates have dropped so much. And it has to do with another way that the body becomes immune to a virus. It's called a memory T cell. I haven't talked about this in other videos. One of the mechanisms that the memory T cell uses is called cross-reactivity. So, for example, there are several types of coronaviruses out there. One would be the common cold. So let's say you got the cold two or three or four years ago. Because all of these coronaviruses are very similar DNA-wise, they're like 90% similar, you're going to develop some immunity to COVID-19 if you're exposed to a previous coronavirus. In fact, what they're finding is that 50 to 60% of the population has this type of immunity to COVID-19 through cross-reactivity, which is fascinating. And this is very important because when you're evaluating something, you never look at one number, you compare it with something else. The reason why the death rate is so low is because our bodies have another way of creating immunity that goes beyond just the antibodies. It's called the memory T cells. All this information can be verified in some really credible uh, sources down in the description box. Check it out.